Let's cut that last part. Well, villains are arguably a strong important of any story. Sometimes they're the most entertaining part. They're the darkness to our lights, the opposition to our main character, and they're the ones who bring all the drama and tea to the game. So how do we write awesome villains? Am I, am I the one to tell you? Well, I'm Brandon Chen. I'm a professional author in the manga, webtoons, video games, and novel space. And so therefore I write stories and therefore villains for a living. And this video about villains is actually sponsored by my friends at Dorian, which is an IP powerhouse for visual novel games where writers of any level can create their own games from scratch without any coding experience and they can make money doing what they love. But more on them later. Alright, let's dive into three ways that you can make your villains stand out. So number one is design. Design for a villain is so important. It's what people remember when they think of your character and it spans from everything from their name to the clothes that they're wearing. <laughs> so the first part we're going to talk about is visual design. This matters most for visual mediums such as TV, uh, video games, comics, but arguably in novels you're also describing characters as well. And what the villain looks like is really going to matter. It represents who they are and how you want them to be visually engraved into someone's mind when they think of that character. So you want to take the time to make sure that the visual design really matches up to who the villain is and make it stand out, make it unique. So right now I'm showing you uh, one of the villains from a game that I have on Dorian and we have someone who's kind of mysterious. He has a bit of a cultist design with the cloak, that's because he leads a cult in the story, but he also seems young, which is not what you'd expect from a leader of a cult, right? He's attractive, which I'm sure there's attractive cultists out there, but that you don't think attractive when you think of cultist. The, the overall design is very different, you know? One look at the character and you're like, yeah, I kind of get what you're about. I get what the vibe is. And I haven't seen many characters that look like you. And that's exactly what you want. Now, the second part of design that we're talking about is the personality. And that's stuff like dialogue, mannerisms, personality. <laughs> this all you know, every, everything down to how they speak, to how they act, to who they are as a person and their thoughts, this all bakes into the character and uh, who they are. You also want to make this stand out, make sure to have fun with this, and really just make them feel like a real person. I think that's really important for a villain. Now the third part of designing a villain is, um, what does this villain stand for? Now I'm not talking about their motivations, we'll talk about that later, but is there a particular motif that they represent? Is there an idea? Is there an ideology? And overall this can be linked to their motivations as well but a character can represent an amalgamation of different things right like freedom chaos there's a lot of words a lot of themes out there pick one and make sure that it relates to number two which we'll talk about next but before i get into number two make sure to smash the subscribe button if you haven't yet for more educational videos smash it i love you <laughs> what Bro, what are you talking about, man? Anyway, uh, back to number two of how to write awesome villains, uh, purpose. Why does the villain do what they do? This is your chance to really create a morally ambiguous villain, an anti-hero, someone that the readers can really relate to. For example, for my Atomic game, Blue Spark, which is on Dorian, one of the villains, the villain that I showed you earlier, Seven, lost someone that they really love. And that's part of the driving force for why they do all the evil things that they do. Now, a lot of good villains think that they're doing the right thing, and as a result, of that we understand their motivations as readers and therefore we start to like them more because we empathize with them right and then if we like them more we feel more emotions typically negative emotions when the villains lose and making readers feel emotions whether they're positive or negative is really our jobs as writers so just keep that in mind not all the motivations have to be good motivations we don't have to empathize with every single villain sometimes people are just evil and that's fine but let's explain that it's weird to have a villain that has no motivation or we haven't really learned about why they're doing what they're doing. They're just being evil for no reason. Don't have your villains be evil for no reason. Explain why they're doing what they're doing. Now, number three of how to write an awesome villain. Make sure that the villain vibes with the MC. What does that mean? The villain is the opponent of the main character or a character that is on the roster. So they should always be challenging the main character in some way, whether it's through physical or emotional challenges. It's really important that they have synergy, kind of like Batman and the Joker, right? Sometimes it feels like those two are a married couple. Other times you get like, they're trying to kill each other. <laughs> my villain uh, in Blue Spark, the dynamic between my villain and the main character of my Atome game, Never mind. Moving on. So if you want to get a start at actually creating your villain, Dorian is uh, actually a great place to host your story. 
You can write games creating existing art for free, or you can import your own custom art as well. Either way, you can literally create a visual novel game that people can play and you can get paid for in minutes. It's actually insane. You don't have to know how to code, all you gotta know is how to write, which is awesome. So if you're interested in joining Dorian as a writer, make sure to click the link in the description. They personally helped me make over three original games for their platform, which have made over a million plays in the last year alone, which is kind of insane because I have never made a game before this moment, right? So it's awesome. Dorian, link in the description. Thank you. Now to close out our talk about villains, I hope that you guys know that you don't need to make a villain extremely complex if you don't want to, right? Some villains are just plain evil, like I said, and you don't really have to understand their motivation as long as they have one. In the end, all that matters is, is that they're a worthy opponent to your main protagonist. That's all that matters. They challenge them in a way that's engaging for the reader, and they're always stirring the pot, causing drama, and causing twists in the stories. And that's the most important thing, because that's what sells. Twists. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe and like for the educational content, and I will see you guys in next week's video. Peace.